Oh man, this bloody hay fever is doing my head in. A massive shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Raining. So those that have followed me for a while now will recognize this car because this is actually my old GTR. And I got a message from my friend Mark who bought it off me about 18 months ago. Got a message from him a couple of days ago and he was like, Cal, do you want to buy your GTR back? and I went there last night and I bought it. Right, before we get on with this video, a quick brief about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online e-commerce store or portfolio. So if you've got a little idea for an online business, with Squarespace you can literally build your whole idea from start to finish and get it up and running. It's as simple as you just pick a domain, pick a template, and then you can start creating your website. And then once your website's all set up, Squarespace also offer the option to do email marketing campaigns, and they also give you the option to customize your website even further with their third party extensions. So if you are looking to set up a website, hit the link in the description below, squarespace.com forward slash Calvin's Car Diary, and make sure you use my promo code when you check out Calvin's Car Diary, and you'll get 10% off. Let's get on with the video. Currently stood under a tree <laughs> with uh, my Nissan GTR, my old Nissan GTR in the background. I changed locations because I thought if I stand under a tree, I've got a better chance of not getting wet. I am still getting wet. I don't care that I get wet. It doesn't matter that I get wet. What matters is if the camera gets wet for two reasons. One, because it will ruin my camera and two, because um, obviously if the lens gets wet, you won't be able to see me properly. But forget that, we'll attempt the video anyway. Behind me I've got my Nissan GTR. I sold this car about 18 months ago. I actually sold this car and then went on to buy the, the Golf R from Arthur. And this car here was my absolute pride and joy. I love this car. The amount of energy that went into buying this car two years before that, so I owned it for two years in total. Uh, the amount of energy that went into from, from, from me buying this car was, was unbelievable. It was the first like proper car that I ever bought and I cherished this thing for the whole time that I owned it. So. When my friend Mark that I sold it to, well, let's go rewind a little bit. The whole time that I owned it, my friend Mark, he owns a, a pet shop, an exotic pet shop, just up over the road from my shop in Dunstable. And he used to see me driving to work in it every day. And he said to me, Calvin, when you sell that car one day, sorry if it's a bit dark under there, by the way. Yeah, when you sell that car one day, I have to buy it. He's got an R31 Skyline, an R33 Skyline, and he's always wanted an R35 GTR. So um, the day came, I sold it to him and uh, he'd barely used it. And over lockdown and stuff, his business has absolutely smashed it because he's obviously, because he sells pets and pets, pet food more importantly. He's an essential business and he's managed to stay open. And yeah, he's, he's smashed it. And part of, uh, I suppose, the next chapter of his life is selling his car and probably getting something bigger and better at some point soon. So he messaged me and said, Cav, I want to sell it, do you want to buy it? And I genuinely have got a bit of an attachment to this car. I saw it parked up in Silso when I filmed the 435D video uh, a few weeks ago and I saw it parked up there in Silso just randomly. I took a picture of it, put it on my Insta story and I was like, I genuinely looked at it and thought, oh man, I've had some good times in that car. So um, yeah, today's video is the first drive in it for me. I picked it up last night. The weather was worse than it w is now last night. and. I wanted to film the collection, but it was just it was just torrential, man. I couldn't do it. So today we're going to go for a little walk around it. Going to go for a little drive in it. I know a lot of you've seen this car anyway, so you're all quite familiar with it. But um, it's a Nissan GTR. It's my, not just my old Nissan GTR, but it is a stage 4.25, 660 brake Nissan GTR. So it deserves 
a slot or two on my channel, right? So we'll go for a little wander around it. If the lens gets wet or it has got wet at all at this stage, I apologise, nothing I can do for that, do about that, but we'll go for a wander into the rain now and have a little wander around it, yeah? Right, before we get on with uh, what performance mods this car's had, let's talk about uh, the externals and the looks and, and talk about the, the list of things or the, the checklist that I had when I was looking for a GTR at the time. So it is a, an early car, so it's a 59 plate car. I think they, I don't know if they come to the UK in 2009. I think they were released um, elsewhere earlier than that, perhaps 2008. Uh, but when I bought one, I, I only had enough money to buy the, the early car. I'd love to have got a facelift like an 11 plate onwards, uh, but I simply couldn't afford one. And um, when I bought one, I had to have pearl white because uh, I think it's such a lovely color. So this color is actually called storm white and it is a pearl color. You can't really see it because it's obviously, it's soaking wet, <laughs> which we all know. But uh, yeah, I love the color. You can get them in gray, you can get them in black. Uh, red's quite a good color. I know it's not a preferred color, but when they're red with like all the black touches on them, they look quite good. Uh, but I just always wanted a pearl white one. And when this car came up for sale, I, I just loved the look of it. It had the, a black front splitter. I'm pretty sure it did have a carbon splitter, but maybe a slightly different one because I bought that one myself. Uh, sat in black wheels. I never changed them because I always liked them. I actually put these Nismo stickers on, perhaps a little bit cringe. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's me anymore, but I love the. I just thought it was a nice little touch. I uh, really like that. And then as you come around the back, the previous owner had actually had the rear bottom diffuser there painted white because they're usually or, or on from factory they're actually always black and it makes the back end look bigger when it's color coded and not so fat when it's in black so i love that side skirts as well at the bottom they're in white and yeah i just loved the look of this car if we have a little wander back around to the rear of the car right this exhaust is actually the stock exhaust uh, that is crazy look how big that like, i've got a big hand man that is like a big exhaust it's actually got a bit of carbon around the surround there of the exhaust as well i love that and the road presence of a gtr like if you stand next to one they are seriously big the back end like this rear quarter it's a seriously big panel the boot's massive the rear end is just huge the big rear lights that's a massive feature on these cars and if you look at like the r34 gtr which is obviously an iconic car it's a legend of a car but they really did transform the look of the, the skyline i suppose it's not called a skyline but they really did up their game with the visuals in this car and a lot of people refer to it as a supercar that is like a proper statement for a nissan isn't it so i think we're gonna have to just jump in the car and go for a drive in it which i know you're not gonna be too disappointed about uh, but quickly go on the inside i've had i had these carbon uh paddles fitted by uh albert at night racer and another spec option i had to have was i really wanted a black edition car because the black editions have got these red outer edge on the seat so yeah that's a big plus for me so oh, another thing that i wanted if i just hop inside uh is sat nav had to have a car with sat nav because big extra on the gcr you actually get more buttons here and without them i don't know i always look, consider resale when i buy a car and spec top spec was priority so what i'll do now is i'll get my camera up on the mount and we'll just hit the road yeah <laughs> I get an idea in my head that I want to do something and I have to do it and today's idea was I want to film the drive to work in my Nissan GTR and uh, I could have just passed on it because of the rain you know it's it's kind of possibly killed the journey but I killed the experience of the video but you know what it, I don't think it will and at least when I arrive at work today I'll be able to say that I filmed a video of my journey to work on my GTR. So, yeah, obviously with the weather being the way it is, you'd expect that we're going to have a bit of a problem delivering power, putting power down. Nah. Because <laughs> with this, with a GTR, look at that, that's traction control of 660 bhp. It is putting power down. And uh, that is exactly what I love about a GTR. Now, I've kind of... Uh, 
talk neg negatively about four-wheel drive cars, re not negatively, but I'm a bit bored, I think, of four-wheel drive cars. Uh, I think the reason for that is they're very predictable, but I think more than anything, they, they sort of tug on the front end, and that's one of the downfalls of my RS6. It used to, when you floor it, the front end used to just pull you around so much, and that is not what you want, especially not when you've got that level of power. Uh, so it makes it a bit of a handful to drive. But GTRs, they send the power to the rear wheels first. So they're a bit different to most four wheel drives. They send the power to the rear wheels first. So it's dominantly rear wheel drive car. And then when it loses traction and attraction at the rear, loses traction at the rear end, it will then send power to the front, which you don't feel that through the front wheel. So on days like today, the back end did skip out a little bit there, but, <laughs> I can feel the back end really. Oh, oh, I think battling for grip is the wrong word. It's it's not it's not gripping at all. But the front wheels are just constantly saving it from slipping out. And it is it is such a good full drive system. Like these cars have got so much stigma. They've got so much. It, it, and this and GTR when it came to the market, it was like it put a stamp on the car market. Everyone had an opinion about this car. And it don't matter. All right, mate. You want to just in front of me it don't matter um what you say they are an absolutely savage car man and when i bought this car i was so proud the whole time that i owned it to be a nissan gtr owner and before i bought it one of the things that i had to have was stage 4.25 which is what this car is and stage 4.25 is the level of tuning that gives you pops and bangs right i wanted drama in my videos <laughs> As a YouTuber starting out, I wanted to pick the right car, which a GTR at the time was definitely, undoubtedly the right car for my channel. And secondly, I said it in the 435D video, what you see through a camera uh, when you're watching a YouTube video is you, you get vision and you get sound. And when I saw these GTRs doing this loud pops and bangs and spitting flames and stuff, you're getting vision, you're getting sound. And I had to have that in my GTR. So the first thing I've done, Look at that, look at the way that's gripping, man. It's unreal, and there is no, there is no torque steer through the front end whatsoever, so. Uh, but yeah, the first thing I done when I bought it was I got it straight to Night Racer. Shout out to Albert Night Racer, lovely guy, he's local to me as well. <laughs> Unbelievable, there's an M4 there actually. Uh, funny enough, that was a car that was really up against uh, my, my decision, you know. I, I would narrow it down to buying either a BMW M4 or a Nissan GTR because the other, the third alternative was a an Audi R8 V8 which had a single clutch gearbox. So we've, which I'm sorry, I've got so much to talk about. Uh, R8s had a single clutch gearbox. I really wanted a dual clutch gearbox, so it left me down to wanting either a GTR or a BMW M4. M4 to me didn't have as much of a uh, a presence or a stance or, or, an, or an impact as a car so I just thought a GTR in my opinion was a different legal car although you know I'm a BMW massive BMW fan uh, so I went for the GTR but yeah I got it into Alberta Night Racer stage 4.25 there's so many levels of tuning with GTRs that uh, it's all quite confusing they don't there's stage 1, 2, 3, 4 and then there's a 4.25 then there's a 4.5 and then there's a stage five, right? So stage 4.25 is pretty much as far as you can go on the stock turbos. And it costs you about 4,000 pounds to do. So is it a lot of money? There is quite a lot of work involved. So yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to do to your GTRs. And it consists of bigger injectors. I think standard, they've got like 570cc injectors. This car now has got 1100cc injectors. Uh, downpipes, downpipes is uh, what you don't get when you get a stage four GTR. And by installing downpipes, you, that's where you basically gain the, the ability to do pops and bangs. You're loving it, aren't you? Yeah, 
Ja, ja, ja. Bigger air intakes, filters under the bonnet, just a just a full tuning package bar doing bigger turbos, right? Stage 4.5 is exactly the same, just bigger turbos, and then stage five is uh, bigger turbos, cooling, a bit more in, in depth, and it's a lot more bloody money. So stage 4.25 is like is a very common level of tuning and it gets you to about 650 brakes so the, the night racer kit is called the kr 650 so yeah absolutely loved it and just out of curiosity i was on the litchfield's website one day and i thought i wonder if we could get into litchfield and get more power out of it just from a bit of software so i booked it into litchfield and they tuned it to a little bit more power 600 and 58 I think it was or 59 something like that uh, that's silly bit irrelevant little numbers but about 660 brake right and that's what this car is running now Litchfield stage 4.25 map with uh, all night racer hardware and honestly <laughs> it is just such a quality car and what a GTR offers you as a driver over I think any other car that I've ever driven is going back to when I said I wanted a car with a dual clutch gearbox, right? That was to me was a massive factor because when you look, look when I hit that that when I hit that paddle, the car just drops the gear instantly. Yeah, this gearbox is so good. They do have their issues. I've never had an issue with a GTR gearbox personally, but I know people that have. Uh, but the gearbox is brilliant, and what a GTR offers you as a driver over probably any other car with a dual clutch, clutch gearbox on the market is it's still got a real analog old school driving feel to it it feels erratic it feels lively and <laughs> and it feels you feel so in touch with the drive of a gtr and you just feel so in touch with the drive of this car. Maybe that's purely down to the fact that it's Japanese. I don't know, but a BMW M3 or an M4, which, do you know what? Someone's got one and they want to do a deal with me on this car. I'm open to a little deal. Uh, <laughs> see it was Strudder in there. That is the wheel spinning, guys. And I just think, for me, I didn't expect when I bought this car that it would give me that. I didn't even know, I thought, at the time I thought, this is a, a modern car, this is gonna be really modern and new. This is not modern and new, this is not glamorous. This is proper hardcore driving, analog, savage driving experience that probably no other car on the bloody car market will give you. And that is exactly why when Mark said to me, Calvin, I'm thinking about selling the GTR, I was like, Mark, I have to have that car back in my life. I did drive it recently, lent it to me for a day or so. And you know when you drive someone else's car, it's not quite the same, is it? So, I did, probably didn't enjoy it as much as I am right now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> honestly, if you're thinking about buying a GTR, I would highly recommend buying one that's true. Uh, stage 4.25, like I say, is a great level of tuning, uh, but anything below that is, is also good. Don't, don't feel like you've got to have the 4.25, uh, but trust me, when you get in the driver's seat of it, you're gonna, I nearly swore then, you're gonna bloody love it. It is such a fun thing to drive. And there are literally loads of good tuners out there, and three great tuners that I would recommend are Litchfield, Night Racer, and Auto Talk as well. Chris at Auto Talk uh, is a friend of mine, and they specialise in selling GTRs as well. So, yeah, you can. he's a great guy, absolute perfectionist, and uh, yeah, I rate Chris a lot. So, my plans for this car, that's obviously what you're going to want to know. Um, I don't actually know. I I bought it with intentions of selling it, uh, but I wanted to decide <laughs> how I feel about it when I drive it. Uh, so I don't know, I actually don't know what I want to do with it, but um, naturally 
if a deal's on the table, I'm gonna do a deal. But I've got a feeling that when I upload this video, Will at VRS is probably gonna watch it because he doesn't actually know that I've got it yet. And he's gonna be like, Calvin, should we tune that car? So we'll see. I don't think there's much more we can do to it on its current level, so there might not be anything happening. I don't know, let's not talk too much about that. Today's just an introduction to the car. Uh, certainly to those that have maybe never seen it before. Uh, but yeah, this is my old stage 4.25, 660 brake horsepower, storm white, 59 plate, this and GTR. By the way, it's done 51,000 miles now as well. So I think when I sold it, it done something like 47 thousand, I can't remember, not a lot at all. So still got good mileage and it is a very, very good example. So I'm gonna leave it as that. I'm almost at work now. I, I haven't mentioned the Planet of Dreams competition in today's video, I just thought about that. And I'll be honest with you, I've got nothing planned. So let me know in the comments below if you want, if there's something like, think of some realistic ideas. I ain't gonna start giving away GTRs, guys. Uh, but realistic ideas, if you've got any thoughts or any input of what car related preferably competitions we can get on Planet of Dreams, comment below, I'll respond. If there's something that jumps out at me, I'll go and buy it straight away on Amazon or whatever and I'll get it uploaded to Planet of Dreams so you lot can win it for nothing. Yeah, it's just, I want to keep it up, I want to keep giving back because I proper love, love just, love filming videos. I appreciate all the support and I love the fact that you keep coming back to watch my videos, all right? So it's just a way of me keep giving back, all right? Right, so I'm gonna end it there. Dumbbells, I didn't mention them. Have a little listen to them before we go. Yes, what was I gonna say? I'm going. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe if you're new. Uh, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. And I'll see you in my next video, alright? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, I'm going to be introducing you lot to another car that I've bought as a free giveaway car that you lot will be able to win on my website, Planet of Dreams.